All right, guys, let's get any news is cut. Take it's on season three, episode six, Subaru's new dragon blood colors curse and how Priscilla saved him. I think it's safe to say Subaru got pretty lucky here. Whereas Krush got turned into some apparent abomination, Subaru mm. instead gained an enhanced mutated leg far stronger than it was before. If I was him, I'd probably slip my throat right now. I'd look at my leg and be like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to live with this. But due to straight bed, that's not happening. And maybe we're just going to continue with this. And maybe there's some powers that we're going to get beyond the regeneration that's going to be ac actually helpful to Subaru in the future. He's kind of like Emiya from Heaven's Feel now. It's a bit too early to say whether this buff is here to stay, but for now it looks like Subaru will be making the most of it. Okay. As for what it is, well, that's what we're going to talk about here. An apparent curse currently at odds with the existing curse already. Yeah, this is the old arm stuff, right? Again, we talked about this in the Echidna Cut content. Arc 2 curse and Arc 5 curse. They're both like competing and we're just like, what? Getting one huge cocktail of a curse party going on inside? The existing curse already inside him. We'll go over that than the details we didn't get to see from Subaru's adventure with Liliana and Priscilla. A lot of Priscilla's charm didn't make it into the anime. Before but first. we get started though, if you're a fan of Melee from here or, or from Overlord, okay. I've got an awesome story recommendation that focuses- Y'all know what to do, use your Annie News discount code, fucking web novel sponsor, woo, get that shit, uh, here's a link though. Copy link address. Bang, 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 oh my god, that's a disgusting fucking link. Why didn't it copy well? How about this? Yeah, how about that? Go take that shit. Episode 56, Conditions of the Night, covering chapters 1 to 3 from volume 18 of the light novel. Subaru's opening scene was actually pretty interesting since in comparison to the cryptic description we got in the novels, the way they visual- Not here to, you know, protect my ego or anything, but I too get those web novel sponsors. And I think that the- the offer it's like these affiliate sponsors are actually so trash <laughs> there, there is like honestly having like patreon is always going to be better than having affiliate sponsors because affiliate sponsors means that you got to like use this code to like you know buy something or you have to like what's the word what's the word like um use this link to like uh download something for example the sakura code and like the tokyo treat stuff I, I was doing that shit for about like a year, right? Guess how much money I made from that shit total? Probably less than $200 or like 100 bucks. Because it requires a person to actually watch the ad segment and actually give a fuck about the product. But this is anime reactions we're doing. And the value proposition of Patreon that you can get the full reactions is much more alluring than the value proposition of the Sakura Core, the Tokyo Treat Box. Not only that, those are like $30 a pop. But let's say someone actually tried it. Then I get a commission of like 10% or something. So I'm getting like, what, $3 per somebody actually purchasing this box that they don't really even want to. So you see how there's this inherent like clash of conflict of what I'm already kind of advertising. And then you do like another affiliate sponsor. And it just like, there is like no point doing it. The best type of sponsors are when someone reaches out for like an advertisement campaign and says, hey, react to this Genshin Impact trailer. Hey, react to this concert. Then they give you like a flat fee per video. And then there's like, depending on your engagement and the viewership, you get paid like at different brackets of like, oh, you hit like a hundred K views. You get paid this much. You get a million views. You get paid this much. It's way more profitable and like better for those kind of sponsors to take. But for people without Patreon, right? I think that of course, it's not going to hurt to do this affiliate sponsorship. And you know what the best part is? I'm here giving you advice and insider information on shit that no one else on YouTube will probably tell you as a content creator. And all 140 motherfuckers in here, just monkeys, have nothing to say. No single opinion or questions about any of this shit. I give you sage-like advice, not on just fucking anime reactions, fucking content creation advice, fucking life advice. Ain't nobody give a fuck, because you're stupid children here to watch, watch anime, so let's just watch anime. realized it here was amazing. We actually got to see the Curse of the Beast duke it out with the Curse of the Dragon. To describe it the way that the novel did, though. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Glazing me as soon as I call your dumbass out. Ain't none of you deserve this shit. The only thing Subaru could hear was all sorts of voices echoing in the distance. Whether it be a battle cry, a grieving wail, a scream, or a sob. Noises of every kind rained down around him. What will this do they for him? They swirled his head like some kind of vortex. 
if he had to explain it any way he could. To Subaru, it was like someone he'd met after a long time was now opening up about everything, hmm? swallowing him whole in an unrelenting flood of noise. Eventually, such noise started to make him lose track of where he even was, then after that, his entire sense of self started to blur together. Who he was no longer felt distinct as countless voices overwhelmed his very being. But he said that there was something familiar before, right? Someone he'd met after a long time was now opening up about everything. Yeah, that part. Around him. They swirled his head like some kind of vortex. If he had to explain it any way he could. To Subaru, it was like someone he'd met after a long time was now opening up about everything. Why is that so specific about someone opening about everything? This probably has to do with how Subaru has like no fucking memories of Satala. Even though in those Shadow Garden moments and there's like the subconscious that seems to be aware of like, oh, in the past we may have actually knew each other for a long time and had memories, but now they're all gone now for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know. Witch Fiend stuff, Curse stuff, and suddenly we're just being, we're feeling familiarity. That's pretty sus. It's no longer felt distinct as countless voices overwhelmed his very being. Those voices then became dark and stagnant, almost like they were trying to break down his identity next. It was as if they were trying to reduce him down to nothing. So, the more those voices overwhelmed him, the more Subaru sunk into that darkness and the less he was able to resist the progressive deterioration of everything that was him. It was right as he was about to resign himself to that darkness that a thread bound around his core would reject it. Oh? Something deep inside him refused to stop fighting even when Subaru had. Uh, is that Satala inside? Knock knock? It was actively going against the dark- Thank you, Bernie, for the 11 months of Prime, man. Darkness trying to throw him into nothingness. So, as these two mysterious forces fought to claim ownership over the self that was Subaru, each tried to kill the other, all so that they could take Subaru for themselves. The novel never described what those two were, but as we'll soon find out, one is the curse of the beast while the other is the, the curse of the dragon. It's Who an won? interesting way of highlighting these two supernatural forces now currently dwelling within Subaru. Are we gonna fuse together? Can they both take Subaru? Like, will this shit actually help him in the future? Rather than one side winning? I don't know. Maybe we can have some OP curse powers. Switching over to when Subaru was saved by Priscilla, a lot of her most arrogant lines were cut to get to other things. For as conceited as she was in the anime, the novel makes her ten times worse. This actually works towards building her charm though, since there's some pretty banger lines highlighting just how witty she is. I mean, when you have her suggesting Subaru spoon out his own eyes for being useless, you get to see that this is a whole separate level of pompousness. Now, if you're wondering how it is Priscilla had even found Subaru, well, it was as she was on her way to execute the person responsible for flooding the city that she- I think that's Al, bro. I think Al flooded the city and Al is also taking care of the 10 Pristilla people, bro. And more parallels of Al and Subaru and Millie, like, the entirety of this episode, who spent time together a lot? Priscilla and Subaru spent a lot of time together. And at the end of the episode, what do we see? Amelia and Al. Now, some people say that it could be Capella. I think that is kind of illogical. Why would Capella suddenly take the shape of Al without even knowing who's the one calling? By all means, you would assume that if the contact was Regulus, why would Al suddenly turn into... Sorry, Capella turn into Al when Capella doesn't even know that she's speaking to Amelia. The fun was turned the other way around. Anyways, if we take the whole mirroring of Subaru's Al, Priscilla is with Subaru, Amelia is with Al, and you know, Arc 3 there's the whole thing that happened again. I think Tapi is trying to be very intentional about like, hey, like you should pay attention to, you know, these little details. There's something greater than, you know, Al is just a mysterious us guy. Like he could just be Subaru from another timeline. Is Priscilla had even found Subaru? Well, it was as she was on her way to execute the person responsible for flooding the city that she would notice a certain commoner floating downstream. We know she was also looking for her retainer Shelt too, but to her the crime of defiling the city like this was unforgivable. So much so that she was on her way to bestow her own suitable punishment. Liliana just so happened to stay close since Priscilla was competent, but that's essentially what these two were up to. Okay. When they switched their focus to Subaru's leg, what was revealed underneath was this revolting pitch-black ligament that no longer hurt. 
It was a feat impossible through any sort of healing magic since as far as the principles for that went, it simply increased the natural recovery ability of a patient's body, mm. not regenerate limbs like what had happened here. So, rather than the gentle power all his allies used so proudly, this grafted abomination was a desecration of everything healing magic stood for. Super just gets the weirdest powers, man. Like, it's like he's never gonna have like cool superpowers of like Reinhardt's like fucking Dragon Blade or like, you know, cool crazy beam attacks, but he'll have like return by death, like taunt. He also had return by death, invisible providence, right? He used to use Shamak, but no longer that's possible because the gate's broken. Uses whip, and now he has like this curse that makes him regenerate really fast with the leg. I wonder what clever ways we can use the leg, because apparently it's painless. We don't feel any pain, and it's just going to keep regenerating. Maybe we can use our leg in a very reckless way, almost as if we're just like sacrificing it to do, to do some crazy moves. It spit in the face of the miracle Felix, Beatrice, Garfield, and even Rem all shared so willingly. Now, aside from Priscilla's shockingly callous experimentation on Subaru, the result of it reminded him that this had something to do with dragon blood. It was a reveal that led to a discussion about what this could possibly mean for him. You're kind of dragon now, so, Subaru. As soon as Priscilla heard it was caused by Capella sharing her blood, she instantly knew it was something akin to a curse. Mm. Reason being that, from what she knew from ritual practitioners up north, a rite such as this was actually quite common for curses. Yeah, and Capella straight up said the curse in the dragon blood. Whether it was a curse or not, though, if this was in fact the same dragon blood Liliana mentioned in her song, the miraculous nature of it made it seem- There it is. Heals all illness, rejuvenates destruction, washes away despair, and treats barren land. Treats barren land? This sounds like you're gonna make like, I don't know, uh, wild, like, uh, what's it called? Like trees grow, grass grow, just like thrive the land. But like, the way that this sounds is really different from what we see. Because yes, we do rejuvenate, we do, you know, heal, but like, it's a really morbid way of doing so. It washes away despair. I would kind of be despairing if I was super and I saw my leg in that kind of state. But like, I don't know, maybe these powers are going to help us in a really cool way and the despair will be washed away. Seemed like it could do anything. As for the other great treasures the holy dragon left alongside it. That's right, one of three. The dragon blood is... One of three, right? There's like holy treasures or something? Her song, the miraculous nature of it made it seem like it could do anything. As for the other great treasures the holy dragon left alongside it, they were mentioned to be the dragon tablet and the covenant. Dragon tablet and the covenant. Okay. Well, the covenant is simply the binding of royal family to dragon it's like you know you're gonna protect us and now it's where there's like this blood packed covenant but there's probably like a, a punishment or some sort of like trade rough right and that's what i don't really know about two lore heavy concepts i'm sure we'll see more of in the future dragon to keep the dragon what dragon left alongside it they were mentioned to be the dragon tablet and the covenant dragon tablet we got an ipad what's the tablet gonna tell us what is the purpose of a tablet when you say tablet, I think iPad, bro. But they don't got iPads back then. Is this some commandment shit? Like Moses? Like rock slabs? That tells you like, hey, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Tablet. Two lore-heavy concepts I'm sure we'll see more of in the okay. future. To keep the focus on Subaru though, the fact his neck didn't heal the same way that his leg did put into question just how much of a treasure the dragon blood really was. Well, it's just because the... Blood and the curse is more centered around Subaru's leg, right? It's not like we're just gonna heal if we get our... Honestly, if, if we had complete regen such that like... What an interesting power that would be to have this ultra regen where you can't kill Subaru anymore. <laughs> where return by death suddenly is fucking pointless. It just it, it defeats the purpose. Like, if this was all it could do, then Priscilla couldn't help but mock the legend this sacred dragon was supposedly known for. This was an insult Liliana didn't take too kindly, since despite her non-confrontational nature- The tablet was shown in Season 1? Sure, the tablet can be shown in Season 1, all you fucking want. It could be just a random fucking asset in the Luganican Palace. But it doesn't talk about it. There's no fucking context about what the tablet does, that's what I'm talking about. Sure, mocking the dragon was unacceptable. As a bard whose job was to sing and preserve the legends of the past, the holy dragon who had the greatest legend of them all was pretty much their biggest benefactor. Yeah? 
But I thought Volcanica sucks. I'm under the assumption that Volcanica sucks. Because, like, everyone glazes them. But ever since Krush said that, like, she wants to get away from that and remove the Covenant and make the people for the, the land of the dragon more for land of the people, I thought that the dragon was actually the one behind all of the Lugunican royal family dying due to the association with the blood, right? Just seemed kind of very off that, what, only this family line died? What did they have? A Covenant? That's a blood tie. I don't really trust the dragon at all. It was essentially the one thing keeping them all employed. It's for that reason such slander wouldn't be tolerated, so in order to get Priscilla to retract her words, Liliana would request she cut off Subaru's head immediately. <laughs> Since all this was just a simple matter of dis- What? She tolerated, so in order to get Priscilla to retract her words, Liliana would request she cut off Subaru's head immediately. Since all this was just a simple matter of dis- What? To prove Priscilla wrong and verify the veracity of the Dragonblood's power, all she needed to do was watch the dragon blood reattach Subaru's head to his body. Jesus Christ, bitch, the dragon blood was in her leg, not the head! Obviously, Subaru objected, but an interaction like this was a nice comedic moment after all that intense stuff with Capella. Yeah, hee hee, nice comedic moment of my head potentially being lopped off, so fun! That said, the main thing to take away was that healing was limited to Subaru's leg. That's right, Whether right it's leg. because of true dragon blood remains to be seen, but this wasn't the time for experimentation. True dragon blood? But there's fucking artificial dragon blood? Capella's dragon blood's different? I don't know. And what about the old garments? What about the, you know, Arc 2 curse stuff? Is that just gone? Did it fuse with the dragon blood? Are we gonna get some crazy shit? Now. When discussing the flood the Archbishop supposedly used as punishment, if it was in fact meant to be retaliation, then Priscilla found it to be rather half-hearted. If these Archbishops were even half as evil as everyone made them out to be, then she was fully expecting something even more despicable. Yeah. The fact that this was all they did, though, indicated to her that they likely valued their demands far more than causing suffering right now. Yeah, they could have just fucked up Priscilla if they wanted, but obviously, you know, you gotta get the remains of Tifon, that's their goal. But why would they flood this shit? In the process of elimination, only Gluttony was the one that wasn't doing anything. Lie. Roy was fighting Julius, but Lie was probably just empty, and if not Lie, there's probably a third Gluttony, because we talked about that shit with the constellations. But the more it seems, the more I think about it, the more cut content I hear, the more it seems like Al is the one that flooded this place. And why would he flood? I don't know. I don't even know what his goals are. Is he opposing us? I mean, if he was, I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Is he trying to help us? Is this the best way to prevent the Archbishops to get to Tifon's remains? We gotta think about how all the 10 Pristilla important people were taken care of. Like the anime didn't say they died, but apparently by now in the source material, it's pretty much confirmed that they're dead. But they were dead before the first broadcast even happened, which is like, how the fuck would someone have that kind of foresight, right? And then we theorize, well, the only person right now, if we're going to work with Al and he's suspicious, and if we're going to think about having this foresight of knowledge of, you know, uh, T-Phone Remains and Priscilla 10, uh, having that knowledge and them trying to get after it, could it be possible that Al's authority also has to do with Return by Death if we think about Al as Subaru and Subaru as Al? Something is really off here, and Al is like the only person that I think I can blame right now. But that seems a little... Sometimes it's too obvious where Tape is like intentionally baiting you. And sometimes you're thinking too much and the simple guess was the right answer. Or we just blame Pandora. I'm always down for that. Even so, at the end of the day, this still was another one of Subaru's failures. Had this been a younger version of himself, then back-to-back -back else like this would have made him fall into despair for sure. I mean, he'd died to Sirius three times over, let Amelia get kidnapped by Regulus, had Beatrice fallen into a coma, got toyed with by lust, then let the city be flooded out of retribution for his own actions. So to him it was truly pathetic how little he'd accomplished. It's even after all that though that Subaru was still committed to pushing forward. If he was to compare it to what he went through during the witches' trials, all this was still nothing. That's kind of true. Because back then we were truly alone. It seemed like really fucking impossible. But now, like, we have so many powerful allies by our side, and there's been a lot of growth. It wasn't nearly enough to make him give up yet. That's when the three of them would get jumped by demi-beasts, which were a fundamentally different type of monster from demon beasts. 
as incomplete monsters from birth, it was only fitting to refer to them as such. It's like artificial. Combine this with their inherently flawed designs. This one kind of looked cute though. And what you get are creations made as if to mock the living. Their obvious defects were a clear indication that this was what their creator was going for. Luckily, this meant they were usually missing one or more of their senses, so that made dealing with them a whole lot easier. So they're just weak trash mobs. Can't believe Priscilla just pulled out the fucking Yang. So she just pulls out the Yangster for any little inconvenience. That said, they were still formidable enough monsters to take out civilians. So it was after Priscilla eliminated them with unexpected precision that there was a cutscene involving Subaru finding a civilian. He would rush over and perform the first aid Clint had taught him, stopping the bleeding and creating a splint for him. First he would aid. then carry wow. the civilian back to his shelter, bringing us to this crucial scene with Liliana. A quick- Damn, they skipped out that shit for Subaru. He had a bit of first aid moment, but I guess that's not really too important. Interesting thing to note before that though is this peculiar statement Priscilla made to Subaru before the shelter. Yeah, time and time after time, right? You have a great timing. Thank you, Authentus, with the five months of tier one, man. Appreciate that. Why would Priscilla say that? Because Subaru just seems to show up at the right time at the right place. But if you think about it, if you analyze all the different scenes that Priscilla and Subaru has interacted, you can definitely reason that time, like his great timing and shit. Even Ram says it. Ram also says Subaru is a man who is just spectacular with his timing. It's just crazy how he just just on point with that shit. Because time after time, we have return by that and we know what's gonna happen so we can like plan around that and it'll seem to other people that like he just knows where to be at the right place at the right time but with priscilla it's not the case for priscilla there was never a time i don't think where we had this like future site and like plan to do shit with her she's just like spontaneous we just like match up and <laughs> i don't know if that's supposed to tell us about priscilla's passive maybe she has a divine protection that alludes to her pompous statement about how the world just like bends over to her like she is always going to be in an advantageous state i don't know if that's at work or if this is supposed to be more link of alice subaru subaru Zal, and priscilla has like a special connection to them who knows and another thing the craziest shit again is when the, her carriage picked up subaru right outside of the royal selection subaru was just calling for a taxi and they showed up immediately. What the fuck is that timing? He didn't understand what she meant by it, but I imagine it's because he has a tendency to show up when it matters most. Like, if not for being saved by Priscilla or even coming across this injured civilian, Subaru never would have been able to find out that Sirius' authority was affecting everyone in the city. As for when he figured that out himself, the first hint was the frustration he started feeling towards Priscilla's in- Ram also says Subaru has good timing. Are you even, like, listening to me? Are you a mobile viewer and you're 15 minutes behind? I feel like I'm in crazy land. <laughs> Where I, did, I literally just state this shit. <laughs> and then you say something as if I missed something to try to point out some extra, like... I'm in crazy land. I'm, I'm in fucking crazy land. Why do you do this to me, bro? Difference here since she was clearly unaffected by everyone's suffering, that level of disregard just didn't sit right with him. Her arrogant self-confidence had become so unbearable that all he wanted to do now was rip off the mask that she was hiding behind. This obviously wasn't how Subaru normally felt, so that ultimately led to his realization that this was wrath. If you're wondering why Priscilla remained unaffected her- Divine protection? She is so confident and cocky, she does not acknowledge Sirius. Herself? Well, her ego was so strong and sympathy for others so non-existent that to Subaru he felt the sharing of emotions was practically impossible for her. Based? So she really is just built different. Or she doesn't give a fuck. I'm like, I don't even feel bad for you peasants. I'm just doing me. I'm the queen. And this, you know, Sirius' authority of wrath, I don't acknowledge it, so it doesn't work. It was the only reasonable explanation that could justify her resistance to it. Or... Now, Seeing it affect all these people down here. You're not gonna tell me what it really is? Alright, there might be some sort of passive. You never know if she got divine protections and shit. Also helped Subaru realize his understanding of it was far too simple. What I mean is that before Sirius explained her authority as a power allowing people to understand each other, but after seeing this, Subaru knew it was a power that forced people to isolate themselves. 
with the way its resonance strengthened when more people were around, it was only natural people would start to avoid each other once fear and unease took over. So if the first instinct of everyone was to remain alone, then there was really no fellowship behind Sirius's power at all. Luckily, Liliana's music resonated with people's very souls, stealing their hearts back and returning it to them. I wonder if this is a temporary solution though, or if they can simply be convinced again. I don't know. It was a power she was well aware she possessed, making it extremely convenient that Priscilla just so happened to be going from shelter to shelter. Mm -hmm. This left Subaru with a whole new sense of motivation, since by knowing he could trust these two to defuse the situation at all the shelters, it allowed him to focus on taking on the main problem. I still think that we should have used the Meteor broadcast device to like play the song and it would be just a way more efficient way to like cleanse people, but maybe it doesn't work like that. I was always theorizing like maybe Sirius would use the broadcast tower or Liliana to, you know, hold a city hostage or, vi or the other way around. So, although so much had gone wrong already, Subaru was committed to turning everything around no matter what. If you're wondering why Priscilla was searching for Schultz, it's because he was a retainer that she actually valued. Really? Al she knew could take care of herself, but Schultz was someone she felt personally responsible for. Why? His charm was also something she deemed irreplaceable, so finding- Schultz was the kid that took out Heinkel body. And I remember him being very cute and funny and serious. He was like, I'm sorry, Heinkel Sama. I'm gonna pick you up now and drag you. There was something about that kid that felt like um, he just stands on business. He is definitely not a coward. It seems like he just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> Again, he just stands on business. The way that he like dragged Heinkel out while addressing other people was funny to me. So I was like, this is an interesting kid. Finding him was on the top of her list of priorities. This brings us now to Subaru's encounter with the Demi Beasts, which, through lots of running, went to prove his right leg was far better than he could have ever imagined. He could really? feel it was way more fit than it ever was before. Dude, this right leg is fucking busted! <laughs> kick with it! What happens if you kick with it, bro? In fact, when a beast had cornered him and charged right at him, Subaru was actually able to jump right over it. What? Unfortunately, he'd get surrounded by two more, but that was when Julius would intervene to save him. Right leg of the dragon is what I call it. That sounds pretty cool, right? The dragon's right leg. I wonder what kind of like, I don't know, stuff beyond just like using it as bait and regeneration we can do with it. Sounds like it's just super OP. Not, not super OP, but like physical strength. It's strong. He jumps super hard. He can use it as a shield. It doesn't like take pain either. He said he doesn't really feel pain anymore. A little recap would then piece together how the fight went on his end, finishing up with the Flood providing the opportunity for escape. Based on how the fight was going prior to it, the Flood was really more of a blessing than a hindrance. Hmm. Reason being that it's highly likely they would have incurred casualties had the fight gone on longer. So this was yet another instance where the Flood seemed rather odd, adding to the mystery behind who could have possibly done it. More shit. It's just Al. It's gotta be Al. Someone is kind of helping us behind the scenes. And the only person that is, you know, just not doing what they said they would do is Al. I don't think it's Yuli. Yuli could be a possible candidate, but I think he just got murked while trying to deliver the letter because everyone that's associated with the letter, bad things happen. It's gotta be Al. Why did he not go to Priscilla? Is he still trying to find her? I doubt it, bro. You saw him fucking respond to the Meteor at the end of the episode. I still don't believe that's Capella turning to Al. That logic does not make sense to me. If you understand that Capella didn't even understand that this is Amelia that was going to be on the other side of the phone, right? She didn't, she didn't see anything. So it's got to be Al going around doing this shit. Why though? Did he plan all this shit? If he has returned by death, I think a lot more things would start to make more sense. But I, I don't know. It was just super. Oh yeah, I meant Yoshua, not Yuli. Yuli is Julius's mercenary nickname. Super weird since there were far more benefits for them than there was for the witch cult. Fast forward now to City Hall, and Felix's breakdown would be far more emotional than what we saw. Ricardo had actually- Fuck you, Felix. Dude, Felix- I What the fuck do you expect Wilhelm to do? What are you doing? You can't even heal people! All you're doing is healing random injuries, 
Fucking... <laughs> What was the one? Couldn't even heal Beako. And oh, you gotta understand. It's a Grim Reaper's blessing. It's too much for Felix. Yeah, I guess it is too much. For the greatest water magic user of all of Lagunica. You're right. What a self-report. What, what else is it? And, and now this. Crushed his face, right? Disfigured due to Capella's blood. Do something about it. And then you're gonna say, You don't understand. This is beyond Felix's powers. And, 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 and this is such an extreme outlier. And you... you I get it, but that's what I'm also telling you. That Felix fucking sucks. He's just a basic healer that happens to heal minor injuries, attaches some limbs when they're clean cut. But like, bro, the audacity to fucking slap Wilhelm's face. Like, I don't give a fuck about Wilhelm protecting Krush. Felix, why doesn't Felix protect Krush, huh? Huh? What about that? Everybody blaming Wilhelm for this shit. What's Felix doing? I don't even think I'm being mean. I am just telling you the feats that I'm seeing from this show with the amount of glaze and the lore built up by Felix and all I see is L after L after L and you motherfuckers just saying, you don't understand. This is too much for Felix. And yeah, I agree. It is too much for the fucking best water magic abuser of Lugunica, bro. Actual fucking fraud. Do something. Ricardo had actually had to hold him back, even bear his fangs since Felix's abuse was unacceptable. Ricardo should have killed Felix right here, bro. The more I, I get Felix, the more I start to like hate Felix. Like, holy shit. Can't even fucking fix Subaru's gate. Can't even do that shit. Can't even fix the sleeping beauty whatever with Rem and Krush, right? Oh, but it's the authorities. I get it. But I'm just saying you would think that someone as godlike, you know, magic user, as water magic user, like Felix could do something about it, right? What, what, what else is there? Fucking dumbass tried to break up the alliance between the Mill camp and Krush camp and then got called out for it. What else has happened after that, huh? Fucking save the people in the town square, sure. But like, I think I, I, I give more credit to Biko there. Can't even fucking fix, you know, uh, Biko state because the lack of monastery. Can't even fucking fix, what's the, what's his name? Mimi either. Yep, can't even fucking fix Mimi. You don't agree with any of that? Tell me. I'm just listing out observations. What the fuck are you not agreeing with? Nagatsuki Tape? <laughs> Source material? Just... Time after time, divine protections or authorities always making Felix unable to do anything. And you motherfuckers actually have the balls to say, nah, you're being mean. <laughs> he's, yeah, here's the thing. He saved a lot of citizens, remember? Wow. Brother, if the extent of the best fucking healer in this kingdom is patching up injuries... I don't know what to say to you. Who the fuck cares about random cuts and bleeding out the injuries? No one gives a fuck. You're the best goddamn healer. Step up and fucking surpass these divine protections or authorities. But he can't because healing magic is that ass in the face of divine protections of authorities. And the way that Felix is represented is just so trash in this show. And if you are so fucking blinded because you're just jacking off to this fucking catboy trap every night, like you can't even see the objective, objective thing that I'm just stating, you are so biased. You, you are extremely biased if you're actually going to tell me that like based on the amount of like glaze and the lore there is for this fucking catboy and the things that he's actually done in the anime, and you're gonna tell me I'm being unreasonable? Motherfucker, I'm stating facts. I am stating observations. Felix would then drop to the ground and claw the floor, all while verbally abusing Wilhelm and Ricardo. I hate this shit so much. You're useless. Spineless coward. Do something, bitch. I don't see your ass protecting Krush. Wilhelm is there supposed to be like the bodyguard. The fucking sword. You should be like the healer that's gonna patch up, you know, stuff when things go wrong. You can't even do that. You are basically just a glorified, like, a team of a hundred medics just patching people's minor injuries, but something significant shows up, can't do anything about it. I hate this shit. And I'm not saying this because I hate Felix. I hate the way that Felix is represented in this show. It's just so ass. It was and, like, 
If you're truly a fan of Felix, why do you take this? You should be agreeing with me and be mad that Felix is not getting these moments that he should be getting. Don't you think that there should be at least one fucking moment where Felix is able to do the impossible? And I'm not saying, like, solve, like, Crucia's, like, um, like, like, this is a really easy way to do this. I'm not saying fix Mimi's Divine Protection of Rune Reaper. I'm not saying fix Crucia's, like, memory issues or, like, the disfigurement of the Dragon Blood. But you know what you could easily do? Let's say you just add in, like, an extra, like, punishment, right? Like, something be, like, of course you can't just fix up, you know, the Grim Reaper blessing Mimi stuff. But maybe you could have said something like, oh, if Felix wasn't there... There's this one component about this divine protection or something that, uh, you know, would have made the situation way, way worse. But because the greatest healer, Luganica, was here, they were able to bypass that. Or like for Krush, if Felix didn't, you know, cater towards, you know, Krush's uh, injuries or whatever, like, like, things could have been way, way worse. But it's always like, oh, Felix tried his best. Nothing happened. Wah, wah. After this, that self-loathing would overcome everything else. Since if his healing was useless in the time that it mattered most, then what was the point of having all this power to begin with? There it is. <laughs> there it is. And it's just like, Tape, this is his writing. This is the lesson. This, this, this is exactly what he wants Felix to go through. Why? Is Felix going to have a training arc? Is Felix going to remember these moments of helplessness, hopelessness, uselessness, learn from it, have some great development, and become the best healer that we're supposed to believe he is? Or is he just going to continue taking L's? Why does Tape seemingly hate this character? Huh? Why? Why can't Felix get dubs? Why does Felix always just fucking just lash out and get mad at people? Maybe not always, but there's a lot of moments like that recently, right? The few Felix dubs I can remember, and I don't even consider, like, large-scale fucking medic just healing random injuries. That's bullshit. That's so insignificant. But, like, you could say about finding the finger. That's one of the few dubs that Felix has. Finding the finger back in, like, episode 23 in that caravan. Telling Ia to protect Subaru. Aside from that, I genuinely can't remember what Felix has done. To him, being the country's best healer meant absolutely nothing right now. It was a title that probably just made his burdens even heavier. If he couldn't even save the person that was most important to him, then Felix couldn't help but feel worthless. He and everyone else couldn't do anything but regret their own weaknesses right now. Yeah, and you lashed out at old man Wilhelm. Fuck you. You should lash out at yourself rather than projecting your insecurities to other people. Julius was no exception either, since his failure weighed heavily on him too. By not being able to defeat the opponents Subaru trusted him to take care of, he was being a lot more apologetic and even anxious. It was so apparent and so out of character that both Subaru and Ricardo would have to scold him. Such words made Julius- Just because a character is mistreated doesn't mean an author hates them. Sure, but they definitely don't like them. And that's the point I'm saying. That the author doesn't have a very favorable attitude towards Felix. That the author intentionally puts this character in such the worst fucking way to see. That like, can you really say- Like, why would an author do this? Think about that. Why would someone just constantly give people more L and L and L and L? Without any hopes of like getting better. Do you think that an author actually likes that character? Maybe they enjoy them suffering, bro. Maybe. But, like, you can't sit there and actually fucking argue that, like, the author actually has, like, a favorable stance on Felix. Because I don't think he does. I think that, like, these powerful characters quite often just gets written into a corner. Because you don't know how to fucking balance them. So, like, you just get shitty fucking representation over and over again. It's just... Yeah, but do you see how Subaru gets better? Like, you are arguing against a fucking ghost right now. You don't even understand what I'm saying. Subaru takes L after L after L. But see how he has moments of triumph over and over? For every L he takes, it builds up to an amazing moment. And there's development and growth. Where is that for Felix, bro? See, you don't understand that concept. That's why you make stupid fucking comments of, Ah, yes, Tape hates Subaru, getting L after L. You don't even comprehend what I'm fucking saying. Yet you're so, like, adamant about, like, proving my points wrong. Like, just try to listen about what I'm saying and actually think about what I'm saying. 
Because I want Felix to be amazing. And the amount of lore glaze there is so much potential. Yet it's just these frustrating moments of like, oh my god, another fucking L. Why is Tape doing this? Is he gonna build up for Felix to have a triumphant moment? Fingers crossed, man. I hope that happens. But like, what if it never happens? <laughs> what if it never fucking happens? He's just the most unfortunate character. I just wonder whether Subaru even knew what fear meant at all. To which Subaru would state his mindset is because he did know fear. He knew it all too well, and it's for that reason he worked hard to ensure he'd never experience it again. So, despite Subaru being painfully aware of everything that went wrong, it's his reflection on those failures that make it possible to keep moving forward. Reason being that, to him, the scariest thing in the world was losing the connection shared with someone precious. To no longer be able to wish for the same experiences they once envisioned together before, well, that was far scarier than anything else. So, so long as there were still things that they could do, Subaru told Julius that they just needed to keep trying. All messing up meant was that they needed to make up for it by taking action. That's right, what's the most important at ReZero? Uh, something of, doesn't matter how you start, doesn't matter about the middle, it's about how you end, and as long as we can clean up this mess, everything's gonna be fine and we'll have a happy ending. One failure shouldn't be enough to stop any of them. This would be where Subaru would start his conversation with Anastasia, but considering the massive chunk that was left out from that, I'm gonna combine that with Amelia's scenes for a part 2 video. Oh, I like this double farm. I much prefer it when he, you know, splits it apart. Just more videos to farm. Nice one. I want to focus on to end this one is the exaggerated feelings each character displayed as soon as Subaru entered City Hall. Like, Felix felt regret far greater than he'd felt before, Wilhelm wallowed in self-doubt and self-reproach. Ricardo bore his fangs out of indignation and annoyance, then- Yo, I, w I wish we had that scene with Ricardo bearing his fangs at Felix and getting fucking pissed off. That would have been actually so amazing characterization. They skipped it though! Julius was filled with doubt unbefitting the finest of knights. Every person was acting in a way Subaru would consider abnormal. But it's fine. Because when hope is at its lowest, Super will probably point to the sky, do his pose, and have a, an amazing, like, victorious, triumphant uh, moment and, like, encourage everybody. He did the same shit with an Arc 3 in the uh, whale, White Whale Subjugation. Everyone was down on their luck. They thought it's over. And then the most useless person on the board, seemingly, just, like, raises morale. I feel like something like that's gonna happen very soon. This was because they were all bearing their hearts more, which was a direct result of Sirius's influence. Her authority was affecting those in City Hall too. Something you may have been able to pick up on really? had Wilhelm, Ricardo, and Julius' emotions been more apparent, but that was- If they had like a flash of red in the eyes, that would have been kind of cool. To kind of show that, oh shit, the, the authority is impacting them. Like the authority is kind of like I, I guess it's just widespread, right? But it's just when it, when you see their eyes is red, then you're just like, oh shit! Now they're really, really under the influence. But everyone is kind of like subtly impacted by that. It was something the anime unfortunately left out. But yeah, that's half of what we missed from episode six. I'll finish the other half with another video on Wednesday. But until then, I hope you enjoyed. Yes, if sir. If you did, then feel free to leave a like and a comment. I will do that. Please go give Mr. Any News a like on the video. Here is the link. And so far, I thought that like the best part, the uh, interesting part about this video, I guess is, there were some peculiar lines in talking about how the curse is, you know, at, at act, about how it's like a familiar sense. But uh, does this hint at super like subconsciousness and relationship with the witches that he's forgotten about? I'm not really sure, but, this curse, cocktail, whatever's happening in our body, a right leg of the dragon, this might be a pretty cool buff. It's just, you know, thinking that this is like a terrible thing, but like this could be like a really, really cool thing that could help us out in the future. And then Priscilla has some really cool moments. Indicated. I think that Priscilla is having like, Priscilla looks better than ever. Because like she didn't really have time to shine at all in season two. She doesn't even show up. Season 1, Priscilla had some moments, but she was just being a bitch back then. But here now, she's kind of just like doing a little side quest and moving around and helping us out. So it's really cool to see her. And then the Yang sword obviously is the biggest pop-off thing, right? And 
I think that it's even more apparent based on the cut content, right? What did the cut content tell us about Felix? Because the anime is straight up just giving Felix more L's and L's and L's. But that's the entire point. That is literally the entire point of this character right now. And for everyone to feel insecure about their lack of accomplishments and failures. And Tape is trying to show Felix just lashing out because he felt like he couldn't protect anyone yet again. Despite being glazed as the kingdom's best water magic user, right? And that is the, that, that is just like the, the saddest part. Is it great writing? And like, I, I think that it is great writing in terms of like highlighting what Felix should be. And then to have all these like insecurities and doubts that comes out in a negative way for sure. But in terms of like how the audience will feel if you enjoy the character, it's just like, Oh man, it, Felix is becoming like more and more hateable. And the fact that even Ricardo like bared his fang when he was lashing out at Wilhelm, that just shows that like this is all intentional. This like make no like mistake. This is very intentional representation of the greatest healer. And I just hope that like there'll be a moment where after taking enough L's, Felix does something. Something of such significance that we can laugh all these shitty moments over. But if you truly don't understand what I'm saying, if you truly think that like, I don't like Felix and that's what I'm saying, you are so fucking retarded. So many people can't understand like observations being made and trying to understand why it's happening. But simply stating something negative about a character that's happening on screen is enough for these monkeys to start fucking ooking out and throwing, start like turning to fucking keyboard warriors saying, leave my cat boy alone. Why aren't you mad? You should, be, you should be madder than me if you actually enjoy Felix and this is how it's treated, but that's pretty much it. Anyways, here's the link again. Here it is. See you next time.